Hi and welcome to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is John. Welcome to Smart Invest Consultants International. This is where we train you about business registration, about taxation. Uh, Today we are going to look at how you are able uh, to file your returns for those who are in employment. Whether you have uh, your P9, which should be provided by your employer or not. Uh, for 2024 uh, filing, you will note the difference a bit. Number one, you will be required, if you don't have your P9, then you will be required uh, to have your NSSF statement. Sorry, NSSF statement. This is because uh, basically uh, for the 2024 year, we have been moved into two tires. That is what we call tire one. I think that one started from January to June. Then from June, our uh, NSSF rates were revised, and therefore you cannot continue using. From January to June, you are using 200. You cannot continue using the 200 from June. The rates are different, so you need to have that. Number two, you need to have your NSSF statement. That is how much you contribute every month to NSSF. Uh, and also, you need to have your NSSF number so that we are able to claim the, that kind of amount that um, goes to NSSF. We have, uh, sorry, to NHIF. We have what is called the relief tax. Uh, when you have, you just need to log in to your ITAX portal. On ITAX, you can see there is a place here written returns. When you add returns, you'll go to ITR for employment income only, because I said it's for those who are in income. So we'll not use Excel for this case because we don't have the P9. And still, if you have the P9, I think this is the best mode to use. So for the return period, remember we are returning for the year 2023. So you'll start uh, 1st January of 2023. And that is if, uh, sorry for that, that is if you have already done your returns for the other years. If you have not, then you have to start at the year where you, uh, you, you had not filed from. So once you have your year there, click on yes that you have an employment income, then click next. So once you click next, you realize that you are in this section A, you have personal details out of populate. So where you have to go direct is this information where return, return information here. Then uh, you go to the first question here, has your employer provided you with a car? So you basically answer the questions dependingly. If you have a mortgage, say yes. If you don't have, say no. Do you have a home ownership plan? So you have to say no. Then uh, we come to this part here. Do you have a life insurance policy? So for all of us who have uh, NHF or who have been contributing to NHF, initially here you have been saying no, but for this time you will say yes. Do you earn an income from a foreign country? No. Then on this part of the bank details here, you don't fill. You just click next. So when you come next, if you don't have your P9, if you look down here, there is uh, that name of your employer, how much he has been able to pay you, and all that. So when you ask for the pin of the employer, just come down here and copy this pin here. Then be able to paste that pin up there. And then you can even click outside, everything will be copied. When you ask for gross pay, you just come to this point here, you copy, then you go and click paste. Then for the others, put zero here, zero, because you said you don't have housing, zero. Uh, if you don't have a pension in excess of 300, you put zero, then you just click outside, and uh, it's able to auto-populate itself. Then you click next there. Now, when you click next, remember I said you must be able to have um, an insurance policy so that you are able to to claim the amount you are you, you gave to an HIF. Eh? So what you do, you can even come here on Google and uh, search for an HIF K 
que ya repito yeah. so um so you can see it is here so you just need to copy it the way it is then come to your excel here and paste it then click outside So once you click outside, you wait for the name of, you can see the National Hospital Insurance Fund appears there. So when you come to the type of policy here, you select uh, health, you don't select NHF, you select health. Then let's say maybe your policy number is 7654, you put your policy number there, policy holder, you put self. So when you put self, then there is commencement date. When this, this policy starts, it is the same as your date of filing. So you select um, 1st of January 2023. So this could be different for people who dropped their employment along the way. So you have to put up the date um, when they when the, uh, they, they stop their employment. Then on maturity date. Again, uh, this should be December 2023, 31st. December. So 31st of December. So this could be quite different for two reasons. Number one, if you didn't uh, maybe got an employment or you are not contributing to NHIF, on um, maybe let's say on January, February started at March. So here you indicate first of March. Another person could be maybe you started on January. Along the way, maybe you quitted your job around let's say July. So here you put that first of July, the last date you made that contribution. Then on some assured, that's why I said you need to have your whole statement. So on the some assured here, you'll come and put. Uh, the, the amount you have contributed to the NHF for the year. So let's say maybe, for example, if you are contributing a thousand, that will be twelve thousand. So once you click uh, twelve thousand, then even the annual sum assured here you put twelve thousand. So once you click outside, you can see this is fifteen percent of twelve thousand. You are able to receive that one as a relief. Make sure you click on add so that you add those details. Then after that, you click next. So once you click next, again, you don't need to, to have the pin of employer in this uh, specific tab and the name of employer. You just uh, add from the taxable salary. You can see it's already auto-populated down here. So the taxable salary, then tax payable on taxable salary. You copy this one here. Then you paste it there. Then amount deducted. Then copy that one there. You can see it is 31275. At this point, eh, let me teach you uh, another way of maybe being able to know your um, NHIF uh, deductions. So you realize. There is that uh, specific amount that we control, uh, that is you are given as a relief every year. And that amount is 2400. That is the, the amount of relief every month. So if you multiply that one by 12, it tells you that your relief should be 28800. So at this point, you have uh, the amount of tax payable or refundable is that one, 274.71. So you can actually deduct 28,800 from that. And you get that your insurance relief was 2,474. So 2,474.71 was your relief. That accounts to 15% of the 
that is 15% because that was relief. So that one is equal to 15%. So you ask yourself, what about 100%? So you just need to take that money, you multiply by 100, then you divide by 15 and see maybe for the year, your contribution for the NHIF here was 16,500. So that is, if you are not able to see that statement, that is the other way you are supposed to work it out from uh, behind. Then from there, you can just click next. Uh, for this, you don't need to fill anything section Q, so click next. So this is where the key is. When you come to defined pension contribution here, so this is the amount of pension you have contributed. For those who are at uh, NHIF only, so this is the amount for the NHIF. So you find there are two. So there is this defined pension contribution. This is the total before NHIF was revised. Then, uh, sorry, even with NHIF re revised for the whole year. But on the second part here, there is defined pension contribution from January to June. That is, January to June mostly we are contributing 200. So 200 times six is basically 1200. But after that, it was revised to tier one and tier two. So you make sure, uh, let's say for example, this one, the total was uh, say 2400. So this one maybe now becomes 600, sorry, two times six, that is 1200. So make sure uh, you have that uh, statement of how you have contributed to the NSSF. Personal relief here, yeah, we said this is 2800. So you click outside, you can see your insurance relief is already here. So the reason why maybe this one doesn't balance is because it was a demo, we don't have the correct figures. So what I normally advise people, especially those who don't have a P9, make sure that uh, the tax referred before you submit is at zero. So you have to see what you have to do with these figures here until this tax referred goes to zero or a negative. When it's like what we are experiencing here, when it is positive, it means that you owe KRA some amount. And uh, if you submit it at the, as this, yes, later you can be able to do uh, what we call an amended uh, return. But remember, an amended return cannot uh, be amended when you have not submitted the P9 form. So just to make sure at this point this one becomes a zero or a negative, then you are able to submit and you have filed your return for the year 2023. For any question, you can be able to inbox us. Our numbers are on this page uh, so that we can be able to direct you more. In any case, uh, you need to support us. The best part of support you can give us is subscribing to this channel and even um, inviting others to be able to watch and subscribe. So thank you until I see you in the next video.